What happens when two large car makers release their hottest offerings in the local market, especially in the hotly contested compact crossover segment? Well, you get a Reagan Strides Comparo, of course. Today, we will pit the newest offering from the Blue Oval, the Ford Territory Titanium, which will go head-to-head -head against the latest subcompact crossover offering from everybody's favorite Japanese brand, the Toyota Corolla Cross Hybrid. These two are in the shortlist of most local buyers, so let's see how they match up against each other. Let's do this! Hello guys, I'm Reagan and welcome back to another Comparo. Now this would be epic in proportions, but it would not have happened if not for the friends that we have at Ford Alabang and Toyota Valenzuela. In fact, we're shooting this right here on location at Toyota Valenzuela, so you could say that the Corolla Cross would have the home court advantage. Regardless guys of whatever car that you choose to buy, well always know that you can always get it from Ford Alabang or Toyota Valenzuela. Now, like in my previous comparos, we will assess these two crossovers according to the categories that matter the most to potential buyers. First, we'll take a look at their price with a cost of ownership consideration. Then, we'll check out their exterior looks for any design cues or possibly design fails. Then, from there, we head inside the car to see the build quality of the materials used inside the cabin. Then after that, we check out the tech features and tech toys that can be found in both crossovers to see who comes out on top when it comes to these tech amenities. After that, we head to the back seat and check out the trunk to see what kind of usable space we can find. And then lastly, we'll take both crossovers out for a short drive here in the Venezuela complex so that we'll see its driving manners on the road and its fuel economy as well. After that, we will find out which of these two crossovers would be the best one for you. So, if you're ready guys, I'm ready, let's begin! While both of these uh, crossovers are top spec variants, their pricing strategy is a little bit different. The Ford Territory Titanium I have here comes in at 1,299,000 Philippine pesos, which is a lot lower than the pricing of the Corolla Cross Hybrid, which retails for 1,650,000 Philippine pesos. So with such a huge uh, price difference, you'd probably think that, well, the Ford Territory Titanium will take the win in price category. But guys, hold your horses just yet. Do remember that the Corolla Cross Hybrid is a hybrid vehicle which translates to lesser trips to the, to the gas pump. This baby can do 23 kilometers per liter in combined city and highway driving versus the 8 kilometers per liter that the Ford Territory can do for city. Well, that translates to maybe a, a third of the amount of uh, fill-ups that you need to do against the Territory Titanium. So in terms of um, actual money figures, that means that in less than four years' time, you'll be able to recover the price difference of the Corolla Cross Hybrid against the Ford Territory Titanium in less than four years, guys. Now, we also note for the fact that the Corolla Cross Hybrid that we have here is based off the Altis, which we all know has an abundance of uh, spare parts and all that. Plus, people who are saying that, well, the hybrid battery might be a little bit expensive to, uh, to replace, well, do understand that Toyota says that the hybrid battery of this uh, Cor Corolla Cross Hybrid will last the entire lifetime of the vehicle. So, if you don't believe what Toyota says, just check out all the Toyota Prius taxis that are going around uh, Los Angeles and you'll see that nobody is complaining about battery replacement there. So given the fact that the cost of ownership of this hybrid is lower because of lesser fuel and of course the abundance of spare parts, I'll have to give a tie to the price category with cost of ownership consideration to both of these crossovers. Let's, let's go. 
The fourth territory is a beautiful crossover with these nice clean lines here and this sexy indentation on the side. The rear half though, or the rear part is a little bit on the busy side with a little bit too much details going on there to differentiate it from other compact crossovers that share the same look as let's say the Range Rover Evoque. And that's the thing really, while the Ford Territory is truly a gorgeous crossover, it, uh, well, it just looks too similar to other compact crossovers out in the market, especially when you look at the rear half of this vehicle. Now the fact that it also has fake dual exhaust tips in the rear bumper doesn't really help its cost as much, especially coming from, well, a performance-oriented driver. Now looks can be subjective and the Corolla Cross isn't really the most photogenic vehicle out in the planet. But if you see it in the flesh, and you've got to see this baby in the flesh, well, you'll see that the design cues totally make sense. The Corolla Cross looks like a sleeker RAV4 and it has these nice bulging fenders on the front and rear that give it a really sexy vibe. Granted, the front grille really won't sit well with some people, but at least you could say that the Corolla Cross didn't really follow any other design cues coming from other car brands. The rear end is also a simpler affair except for the fact that well the badging it could have been executed a little bit better. It's a small miss though. Now since the, the Corolla Cross looks like a Toyota and doesn't really follow other crossover designs like the Range Rover Evoque, well I'll have to give the exterior looks category to the Toyota Corolla Cross hybrid for following its own design sense. The interior of the Corolla Cross Hybrid, even if it's a top-spec model, resembles that of the Corolla Altis. You get some uh, plastics here that are a little bit on the soft touch side, but there's still plastics on the door panels, on your dashboard as well. But at least you got your leather-wrapped steering wheel here and your leather seats as well. The Corolla uh, Cross uh, interior couldn't really be accused of being plush. It's really more of the plain and simple and even practical side. There's really not much in terms of embellishments that can be found here. It's really just pure and simple, a Toyota cabin. Now let's check out the Ford Territory to see what kind of cabin materials it will offer us. Well, well, well. <laughs> As I said in my territory car review, if you're used to a typical Ford cabin, this is not your typical Ford cabin. I mean, guys, you got leather wrapped all around your vehicle. You got leather wrapped steering wheel here. You got leather seats. You've got leather as well in the high traffic areas, such as your middle dashboard, your door panels, and everything just looks so plush, guys. You've got your switch gear here that feels so premium. They're made of plastic, but it's still quite good to the touch. And you also have a really fantastic layout that you have here. In, even if it's a lower priced vehicle than the Corolla Cross Hybrid, this Territory Titanium is uh, head and shoulders above that of the Corolla Cross Hybrid when it comes to the actual materials used inside the cabin. Fit and finish, it's also terrific. It's also what you'd expect from a Ford. So given the fact that we really have a nice plush interior cabin here in the Ford Territory Titanium, I'll have to give the win for the build quality and materials use to the Ford Territory Titanium. The Corolla Cross Hybrid is a top spec model, so you get a fair bit amount of tech here inside the cabin. Your instrument gauge is a fully digital display here that is quite nifty and you couldn't really find it in other uh, Toyota models. Your infotainment system also became an 8-inch touchscreen infotainment system instead of the usual 7-inch found in the other Toyota cars. And this one already has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and hooray hooray, a rear view camera as well. The design of the infotainment screen is just tacked onto the dashboard though, so the design execution could be improved as well. This a Corolla Cross Hybrid also has Toyota's Safety Sense 2 system, which is a suite of safety features that will ensure that the Cross Hybrid will have a safe and secure drive. However, you don't really get any other niceties here aside from those. You don't get a moonroof or a sunroof, and you don't even have climate controlled seats as well. So let's head over to the Ford Territory now and see what kind of tech we can find in the Ford Territory Titanium. The Ford Territory has enough tech features here to make any techie millennial smile 
or your Lolo frown. Depends really on how you look at it. You've got a fully digital instrument gauge system here or display that has the famous fashion mode. You have a humongous 10-inch infotainment touchscreen system with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and it has a nifty 360-degree view camera with that really nice and fancy drone mode. You also have a panoramic sunroof here and you also have well assisted parking feature, something that we only found in another crossover aside from the territory. You also have an electronic parking brake as well. And if the Toyota Cross uh, Hybrid has that uh, Toyota Safety Sense Suite too, well, the Ford Territory has F Ford's 360 co-pilot safety system, which is essentially the same thing as Toyota's Safety Sense Suite 2. You got adaptive cruise control, you got um, emergency braking, and all that. This baby has a full Christmas list of tech features that will make any techie really cry out for joy or any Tito of Manila cry out in frustration. So given the abundance of tech that you can find inside the Ford Territory Titanium, it takes the win in the tech category. Now, since these crossovers belong to two different categories, it may seem like the Ford Territory may have the unfair advantage. So what we'll do here is we'll also assess them according to the average sizing in their respective categories just to make sure that it evens the playing field. So the Territory would naturally have more backseat space here. So you could see I got a good amount of knee room, leg room, and head room as well. And it's really more of a match with the larger RAV4 than the Corolla Cross, which is a subcompact crossover. You also get uh, some nice teas here. You get a couple of uh, rear AC vents here, and you only have a solo USB port as against uh, the dual USB charging ports found in the Corolla Cross. The belt line of the territory is a little bit on the high side as well, so the rear visibility is a little bit compromised in that segment. However, when it comes to the trunk, this is where, well, the territory falls a little bit short. You see, the territory only has 420 liters of trunk space, which would seem like it's decent until you compare it to the other compact crossovers in the segment, which rock 500 liters of trunk capacity. The Corolla Cross would understandably have a tighter back seat, being a subcompact crossover after all, so we couldn't really fault it for that. However, you still get rear AC vents here. You get a couple of USB ports as well, and it's at the trunk where the Corolla Cross truly shines. When you go over to the trunk, you will be treated to a class leading 487 liters of trunk capacity, which is even bigger than the one that you can find in the Ford Territory. And that's actually a bigger car. So the fact that you have a larger trunk space here, or even the class leader in trunk space when it comes to subcompact crossovers, and you've got the nice tees as well in the back seat, I'll have to give the winner for the space category to the Corolla Cross Hybrid. The Ford Territory Titanium has a higher horsepower and torque figures at 140 horses and 225 newton meters of torque. However, having said that, this is also the heavier vehicle because this territory is at 1,636 kilos, which is a whopping 250 kilos heavier than that of the Toyota Corolla Cross. Now that weight penalty can also be felt in the fuel economy because this uh, gas power, the territory can only muster 8 kilometers per liter in the city and 14 kilometers per liter in the highway. That pales in comparison to the Toyota Corolla Cross Hybrid, which can do 23 kilometers per liter in mixed city and highway driving conditions. Now, that 8 kilometers per liter city and 14 in the highway is pretty standard for the for a compact crossover, but yeah, it's still not as good as what you could get from the, well, from the Corolla Cross Hybrid. Now, driving dynamics aside and the fuel economy, this is still the plusher cabin, and I really wouldn't mind spending a lot of time here when stuck in a traffic jam. Now, let's check out the Corolla Cross and go back to Toyota Valenzuela just to see what kind of driving dynamics and fuel economy we can expect from the smaller vehicle. The Toyota Corolla Cross boasts the best fuel economy in the subcompact crossover segment 
with a quoted mixed city and highway fuel economy of 23 kilometers per liter. That totally demolishes all of its competition and that also means that it has the best fuel economy as well, at least in this Comparo. Well, granted, we're still just stuck here in the uh, Toyota Valenzuela complex because we cannot really take this car out on the open road. But I'd love to have that opportunity to really test that fuel economy figures in real world driving. Hmm, paging Toyota Motor Philippines, maybe we can make that happen one day. Granted, we all know that the Corolla Cross is down on power at only 120 horses and 142 newton meters of torque. But one thing that you guys have to know is well, the spec sheet doesn't always tell the true story here. Despite being low on power, this Corolla Cross feels much more nimble on its feet and that's probably owed to the fact that it has a lower curb weight than the Ford Territory. This uh, Corolla Cross is even one of the lightest subcompact crossovers you could get because this baby is almost as light as the athletic Toyota Cor uh, 86. Well, it's not as light as the Toyota 86. It's 87 kilos heavier than the Toyota 86. But still, for a subcompact crossover, that is still a very light vehicle. Now, that light uh, curb weight contributes to a really good handling performance. As much as I could uh, share with you here in the complex of Toyota Valenzuela. <laughs> but yeah, that kind of uh, curb weight would translate to a really nimble ride that we have here in our Corolla Cross. So because of that stellar fuel economy over the Ford territory and it's lighter on its feet and it feels quicker as well, I'll have to give the driving performance win to the Toyota Corolla Cross Hybrid. Given the larger size and the lower price point of the Ford Territory Titanium, it would be easy to think that it will be a shoe-in when it comes to this Comparo. However, the Corolla Cross Hybrid surprised all of us with its large usable space for our subcompact crossover, its fantastic fuel economy, and its handsome cohesive look. The fact that both of these crossovers serve two totally different market categories makes it a lot more interesting. The Ford Territory Titanium is for those who are looking for a family-friendly vehicle that won't break the bank. Well, the Toyota Corolla Cross Hybrid is normally for young couples or let's say retirees who want to do their share when it comes to saving Mother Earth. The fact that we have both of these crossovers at such an affordable price point makes it a really, really great time for the local car buyer. So it doesn't really matter whether you choose a Toyota or a Ford, you really can't go wrong with either of these crossovers. Once again, guys, thank you for watching one of my Comparos. If you like this showdown, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button as well. I promise you guys, it will be worth your while if you subscribe to Reagan's Rides. I'm Reagan, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.